Get ready to match the star. Robert Morris. Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Riley. Adrienne Barbeau. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Fly. As we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the star of Match Game 74, Gene Rivers. fifth position. Thank you, Johnny Olson, and thank you, dear friends and gentle hearts. Are all the weirdos ready? <laughs> yes, yes. May yes, ma'am. Yes. Doesn't Charles look just like Catherine Hepburn in Philadelphia's story? <laughs> <laughs> well, not exactly. She didn't smoke a pipe, as I oh, remember. That's right. That's oh, right. take the pipe away, take <laughs> You look splendid, Charles. May Splendid. I see Dr. Fonsworth <laughs> yeah. immediately? Listen, Charles, when are you leaving? I hate to bring this up, because we're going to... I'm leaving. I'm going away for a little while, and yeah. I'm returning. And we know what? where he's I'm going. I'm going to play on that, Broadway see, you gotta tell for him a what little while. Do. What's the name of that thing? God's Favorite. And who wrote it? Neil Simon. I think that's it. Back to Broadway. They wanted a Katherine Hepburn type who smoked a, a pipe, and I'm... Okay, well, <laughs> we will, you will be sorely missed. It opens missed. December 11th at the Eugene O'Neill Theater. I'll be there. Thank you. We have a date already. Okay, perfect. I'll we have there. a date. I'll be there. What will my wife say? I'll be for there. you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I'll be there. Okay, let's say hello to our two players, Phil Perell and Marva Farmer. How are you? Hi, Jane. How are you? Okay. Phil is our current champion. He has $9,650. And uh, when we were together last time, we got to the beginning of round two. Marva scored two matches in her first round question, so it's two to nothing at this moment. Two questions to go, and we'll have a go at that in a moment or so. But right now, friends, please pay attention to this. Okay, I'll push this button and reveal our second round questions and ask Marva to make a selection. I think I'll try A again. A. All right, here it is. Got it. A is what Marva wants. The mattress salesman said to the young couple, just a minute there. You don't test a mattress by blanking on it. Would you swing that in ragtime? The mattress salesman said to the young couple, just a minute there. You don't test a mattress by blanking on it. Well, that's all right. What's that? Well, who plays? Who plays? Two, Charles and Robert do not play. Okay. Bobby's heart is broken. He was in tears in when he saw Doc Wright on the previous on day. Run. All right, now we're all set. We'll come over here to Marva and ask her response to this. The mattress salesman said to the young couple, just a minute there. You don't test a mattress by blanking on it. Making love. Making love. You like that answer? They like that answer? Everybody likes that answer. And she's hoping you like that answer, Brett. I love that answer, and it's all according to where your head is at, whether or not you think I agree with her. <laughs> Jumping. No. Sorry. Adrienne. Well, for some people, this is the same thing. Yes. What did she say? Richard? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Would you show us your card, please? Of course. I don't uh, hedge around the bush. Loving. Loving. There's a match, Marva. And Fanny. Dancing. Dancing. <laughs> that's another good answer, too. OK, so that's three for you. And now, <laughs> Phil, we come to your dancing. question here. Everybody plays now, because Phil didn't match anybody on his first round question. Joyce said, I think Dr. Harris is really a horse doctor. After I took off my clothes, he put a blank on my back. <laughs> this girl, Joyce said, I think Dr. Harris is really a horse doctor. Oh. After I took off my clothes, he put a blank on my back. He put a blank on my back. You heard that, Phil. Okay. See? Now that I've finished, he started. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Everybody's ready up in the upper tier and the lower tier when we come over to Phil Perel. Joyce said, I think Dr. Harris is really a horse doctor. After I took off my clothes, he put a blank on my back. Saddle. Saddle. He had that one all thought out and all planned. I would have said blanket. What'd you say? Saddle. You said saddle. All right. Three saddles ties the score. Four saddles wins the game. Brett. Oh, Phil, where do you want to go? <laughs> Acapulco. Uh, Paris. Come on, uh, uh, do you not name tantalize. it, honey, and we'll saddle it. There it is. All right, that's two. Charles. Saddle. Saddle. Three ties the score. One more saddle wins the game. Oh, Phil. What? I said saddle. Saddle. Blanket. Well, Marva, I'm sorry to see you go. Listen, it was a real pleasure meeting a pretty lady like you. you. May we she wish you the very great. best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Marva Farmer. Okay. I know you're ready to play another game, but we've got to play a game with our audience, and we'll come to you in a moment or so, okay? Here is Phil Perel, who now has $9,750, and this is the fifth game he's won, and he's going to have a go at over $5,000 now. You're pretty cool about this whole thing, aren't you? I'm trying to be. Believe me, I'm trying, but I'm shaking no. inside. No, well, you look cool and collected to me, and you're doing very well, Phil, and good luck as we have another go here. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Shake blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match it. Then if you match their next answer, it's $250. And the third most frequent response is worth $100. Which celebrities are you going to call on for an assist here? Richard? Something that Charles and I use is face powder. Shake and bake. <laughs> shake and bake. Okay, there's one. Brett? How about shake a leg? Shake a leg? Okay. You got two now. Fanny? What about uh, shake, rattle, and roll? Shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> so you've got shake, rattle, and roll, shake a leg, and shake and bake. Do you want one of those, or do you want to give us one of your own? I'll go commercial, shake and bake. Bye. Shake and bake. That's the one he's looking for. That's the one he hopes is under the $500 response. We'll begin at the bottom and find out first. What is there under that $100 response? Shake and bake. He got it. Right off the bat. Shake and bake. Shake and bake. I thought that'd be up there a little bit higher, because that's a pretty popular phrase. What's under the $250 one? Shake well. Oh, yeah. Shake. Before taking medicine. What do you think's under Shake the $500? Shake it. Shake up. Shake up. Shake, rattle, and roll? Shake you up. don't know, do you? Shake up. Here it is. I'll tell you, shake, yeah. rattle, and roll. Shake, rattle, and roll. Fanny gave you that one. Okay, Phil, now you're going to play for another $1,000. Which celebrity do you want to try to match head-to-head -head exactly? Fanny. Okay, Fanny, get ready to write. Phil will face me. Here is the $1,000 question. Blank West. Blank West. W-E-S-T. <laughs> okay, Fanny's finished, Phil. Now, what answer would you give us that will match hers? Blank West. I think I'll go with Zane Gray's Head West. <laughs> Did Zane Gray say that? I think so. Not if not, exactly. I just meant it. <laughs> head West young man. Not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, whoever did it, I'll go with Head West. Yeah. Well, it, it was Greeley a guy who said lived, it. Yeah, Horace <laughs> Greeley, who lived in Brooklyn, yeah. said it. He said it to Zane Gray. Yeah, he said it to Zane Gray. Yeah. And actually, he said, get the heck out of here. Because <laughs> you're very close. Yeah, all right. He says, head west. And remember what we said at the beginning, has to be an exact match. Now, Fanny, may we see yours for $1,000. It was Mae West who oh, said, go west. But I didn't say it. Yeah. No. Go west. It was Horace Greeley who said, go west. You and she, she were on the west, same track. Man, but the rule says west. it has to be an exact match, so I'm sorry. We can't give you the $1,000. Are you an American? Phil, <laughs> you've got $9,850, and you're going to play another game. If you're ready, let's bring on another player. Here comes Darlene Pancho. Hello there. How are you? Good. You know Phil Perel? How's Darlene, and where's she from and all that? Darlene's from Toronto, Canada. Yep. And my hands are shaking. Really? Really. No one will see that your hands are shaking. Okay. You look very cool and collected to me. I think so. Are you married? <laughs> no. You're not married? No. Yeah, she you will be in a here? minute. 
No, you live, really live in Toronto? No, I live here. Oh, you live here? No. But you were from Toronto? I was from Toronto. Okay. Nice to have you with us, Darlene. Thank you. Nice Good to luck be. to you. Thank you. Bing. Bing. What would you like there? A, please. You want A? Oh. All right. Here we go. Brand new game. Mm -hmm. This is for Darlene. All right. Fanny Flag is wanted by the FBI for streaking. <laughs> On the wall of every post office in the country is a wanted poster with a picture of her blank on it. <laughs> One more time, Darlene. Fanny Flagg is wanted by the FBI for streaking. On the wall of every post office in this great land of ours is a wanted poster with a picture of her blank on it. Oh, everybody is ready. But Fanny Flag. I can't figure it out. Go ahead. Okay. Fanny is a wanted poster with a picture of her blank on it. I, I did it. Oh, you did it. Oh, I thought you didn't understand it. Oh, I have to change. <laughs> you have to change, Charles. You're holding everything up. Put a robe on, Charles. Okay. Now we're all set. Darlene, Fanny Flag is wanted by the FBI for streaking. On the wall of every post office in the country is a wanted poster. You know what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, with a picture of her blank on it. Her bra. Her bra. Her bra. All right. Uh, Robert, what'd you say? Well, Fanny, I guess, would have a picture of her Fanny. Her right. Fanny on it. Yeah. That's good. Very good, Robert. Brett? When Fanny does this show, we room together. Yes. And you could not mistake them for anything else. <laughs> or belonging to another person. I said, bazoo. Bazoo. <laughs> Doesn't match bra. Getting close, though, Charles. Actually, the picture is not a poster. The picture takes the whole side of a building, because it is her bazoo. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Can we do it without all these personal comments? <laughs> that poor girl. What do you say? This isn't easy. Poor isn't girl, easy you're you know? it isn't, Have you been watching this at home? Of course. And I always Good. think, why don't they all say the same thing, you know? But yeah. there are choices. And that was my choice. Bosom was my choice. But I really thought that Darlene might say face. So I went with face. Okay. All right. Well, you're playing the game and you're doing it well. Richard, what do you say? Um, let me say what I say. I always say a stitch in time. Say he's not. Yes, that's very good, Richard. What else do you say? Uh, another thing I say is... How about an apple a day? Rolling Stone Rolling Stone. No moss. That's right. Rolling Stone keeps a doctor away. Right? That's another good one. Yeah. Of course, I don't How about it. better late than never? <laughs> Nice to hear from King Kong again, isn't it? <laughs> I said bazoom. Bazoom. No drop. All right, Fanny. Well, I got very nervous thinking about me streaking. You know my mother streaked the VFW bingo game. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She won the jackpot. I said picture. <laughs> picture. She had, I don't know why I said that. Is it one poster with a picture of her picture on it? I know. See, I don't think Darlene... <laughs> I saw you write that, that's why I asked. Did you really understand the question, but you didn't? Well, I don't think Darlene did, because when you streak, you don't have a... Uh, that's right, you don't have a bra. See, you wouldn't wear it. That's right. Okay, now let's see. Uh, well, you're going to have to stand by for a moment here, and we'll Victor, come to you in a moment or so, but right now we've got to do this for you. Here we go. Okay, now we're in the middle of round one. You ready, Phil? I'm ready. Let's see how you do with your first round question. Rose, phone the psychiatrist. Doctor, come quick. My husband's up on the roof and he won't come down. He thinks he's a blank. <laughs> she panics easily. <laughs> this lady named Rose. Telephone the psychiatrist. And she says, Doctor, please come quick. My husband's up on the roof and he won't come down. He thinks he's a blank. Oh, I've got it. Oh, honey, that was easy. I don't know what was wrong with me. All right. Everybody's ready. Phil Perel. Rose phoned the psychiatrist and said, Doctor, come quick. My husband's up on the roof and he won't come down. He thinks he's a blank. He thinks he's a cat. He thinks he's a cat. C-A-T, cat, he said. A cat. A cat. No, he thinks he's a boyd. A boyd. <laughs> Brett, what does he think he is? Yes, I thought he was a boyd, too, A boyd, all right, Charles. But for a more clever, charming answer, He thinks he's a fiddler. I think that was wonderful. 
Hello there. Show me dance. I listened to that song for two and a half years. I know you did. <laughs> And what do you say here? Doctor hey. comes up by his other roof and he won't come down. He thinks he's a... He thinks he's a bird. Bird! That's the answer, Phil. All right, Richard. No, he was spinning around. He thought he was a weather vane. A weather vane! That's a good one. Pointing north. Splendid. Yes, Fanny? Now, for your Alabama Baptist answer, he thought he was a TV antenna. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Brown. So we heard from the Alabama Baptist. <laughs> Now, where are we? Oh, we go to round two, right? Darlene, would you make a selection? B, please. B. She had, you had A last time, didn't you? Yes. Now you're trying B. Here we go. Robinson Crusoe said, On Wednesday, Friday stuffed fruit in his ear. On Thursday, Friday went blank. <laughs> Robinson Crusoe said, On Wednesday, Friday stuffed no, fruit. No, you can't see it. Every time she tries to see it. I was speaking. <laughs> Is he joking? The star was speaking and you interrupted yes, him. Yes, but I'm ready. <laughs> Robinson Crusoe said on Wednesday, Friday stuffed fruit in his ear. On Thursday, Friday went blank. Friday went blank. You got it. Okay. All right. Now, Darlene, Robinson Crusoe said on Wednesday, Friday stuffed fruit in his ear. On Thursday, Friday went... Repeat the question. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Robinson Crusoe said on Wednesday... You know who Friday was? Yeah. He was this yeah, friend of Robinson uh, The two of them were... Well, I don't know. Robinson Crusoe said on Wednesday, Friday stuffed fruit in his ear. He could have done it on Thursday, but he said on Wednesday, Friday stuffed fruit in his ear. On Thursday, Friday went... You see... Even though you don't understand it, we have to talk. <laughs> Robinson Crusoe said on Wednesday, Friday, stuffed fruit in his ear. On mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday went... Ape. Ape. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Crazy. Robert, what do you say? You're going to have no trouble meeting people out here. <laughs> Bananas. <sighs> no. They're asking, is going ape and going bananas the same thing? Is going crazy? No. He says no. All right, Brett. You mean going ape and going bananas is not the same thing as going crackers? <laughs> it's a fruit. What are you doing? It's all the same, <laughs> darling. Well, Listen, it's just I crackers. think... Goofy is goofy, no. right? Okay. No. Oh, all right, listen. Would you like to give us your definition of going ape? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crackers. What is that? Going is going crazy. ape is going... Yeah, going ape is going, going ape. Going ape. Nothing to do going with fruit. Yeah. to go ape. All right. Charles, what do you say? I said bananas. Right. Bananas. Going All right. Bananas. Why don't you, would you like to have a commercial here while we uh, caucus no, on what's going on here? Fruit. Fruit. She didn't All right. Fruit. What did you say? Fruit. What do you have to I caucus? cried for both. I said yeah, bananas, bananas or crazy. <laughs> bananas or crazy? I mean, that's what I meant. Bananas. Going yeah. bananas is... All right. Okay, what do you say? Well, I would like their definition of going ape. But you haven't written it. What do you no, got? I don't there? accept this. What did you, well, Richard, it's show and tell time. Darlene, I'm going to take this to the highest court in the land. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, you'll stay at my place. Okay. <laughs> Crazy or bananas? Crazy right. or bananas? Right. Yes. And Fanny. And now to break the descent. Yeah. I said he went deaf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Now here we are in the middle of round two. We have no score, and uh, we're going to do a little business, and then we shall return, as the man said. Listen, I tell you what we're going to do. Because some goofy things happened in that question that we gave Darlene, and it was, I don't know, just to be fair to everybody, uh, when we get back together next time, we're going to start round two all over again with other questions. Okay? Fine. All right? Good. Thank you. You were all splendid. And we shall look forward to seeing you next time because you're all beautiful people. Remember the words of our producer when I said to him, what is life all about? He said, bananas. <laughs> Gene Yeager from Match Game 74. Join us next time. Goodbye.